Now, there has been another complaint, and that is that uh, a promise was unmet, that up until now, the professor has not come close to death. And I promised you on that first day that, that that would be part of the class. So, what I have here is some liquid nitrogen. Anyone know how cold that is? Very cold, dang cold. It's liquid haver, okay? It's 320 degrees below zero. And that's the temperature at which it boils. Now this stuff looks like water. But it boils at 320 below zero. Now, if we wanted to boil water, we'd have to get it up to 200, uh, 212 degrees in America. Canadians can do it at 100. But uh, uh, now, because of that boiling point, if I were to pour some of this in this flask, if I cap that off, that's a bomb and glass goes everywhere, shatters and... But I'm going to leave an escape valve. Yeah. Now you don't, don't have to go see Old Faithful, those of you from California. <laughs> Got that done. Okay. Now, typically, we put a rubber ball in there, we let it bubble and boil, and then we take it out and throw it down and it shatters. But we didn't have any rubber balls in the demo room here, so instead I'm just going to use my hand and we'll... What were you expecting? Huh? <laughs> Fingers everywhere? <laughs> Listen carefully when I put my hand in. Did you hear the boiling? That boiling sets up a layer of gas, nitrogen gas, around my hand. Now that layer of gas protects my hand from the cold for a while. Now, when you buy a down jacket in the wintertime, it's not the feathers that keep you warm, it's the, the layer of air that's trapped in those feathers. We call that the Leidenfrost effect. And that will allow me to do this next demo, which is truly stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This demo has not always gone well. Um, many years ago, I was asked to give a 10-minute talk before the legislature in Montana in Helena. The, the governor and his entourage were down front. It was just a grim-looking group, and I was very, very nervous. And I did this as part of explaining what we were doing in the physics department here. I did this as part of my, my talk. And I was so nervous, I was shaking so bad that I spilled down the front of me and it, it pooled right there and there's a scar. Anyway, <laughs> I was so nervous that I swallowed a little bit and it just expanded and expanded and the rest of the talk, every time I opened my mouth, I just belched and smoke would come out. So it was really a, a fiasco. Um, I, do, I do need to warn you, uh, liquid nitrogen is fairly easy to get here on campus it's cheaper than root beer. I mean, it's really just liquid water. Uh, no, liquid air is what I meant to say. Uh, nitrogen is what makes up, uh, that's what most of the air is, is nitrogen. And so if you take air and you cool it, you cool it, you cool it, if you get down to 320 below zero, it condenses into a liquid. And you can cool a gas by expanding it. If you've ever, uh, fired a, a fire extinguisher, I'm not saying that you should do that if there's no fire, but if you do that, uh, you'll notice that the bottom of the fire extinguisher gets all frosty. When you expand the gas, it cools it, and uh, that's how they make liquid nitrogen. I just want to tell you, if you get some of this stuff, be very, very careful when you put it in your mouth. There was a grad student in New York who swallowed uh, a bit and, and they had to save his life with many, many operations because it was just ripping him apart inside. So if you, if you do this demo, you definitely want to get it out of the mouth as quickly as possible. And don't swallow, okay? Um, again, it's the Leidenfrost effect, the boiling that protects uh, your mouth. Now, after class, if anyone wants to put their hand in that, you're welcome to. I only ask that you not 
get your sleeve in there. You don't want it to soak into your clothes and be up against your skin. And don't have any jewelry on the hand that you put in. And don't linger, don't just leave it down there, just in and out, okay? Reach for the bottom. 